Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome here on this rainy day um, to those of you that joined us. I'm impressed that those that made it in on this rainy day. And of course, thank you to those who are watching us um, online. Um, we are um, reading through Old Testament lessons um, through the fall. And um, this, is week fit, this is our third week on Genesis. It's our last week on Genesis. Um, we now hear about Jacob and Jacob wrestles with a divine being. Um, their scholars have a lot of heyday exactly who this divine being is but um, so we have that story um, prayers I thought we'd pray for everybody works in retail um, praying for First Lutheran Church in Montclair so remember them in your prayers um, in case you didn't figure it out our work day yesterday was canceled because of rain but some people came early and got the mums planted and many of you donated them so thank you for that um, I actually haven't had an opportunity to look at it because by the time I got done working on fr day, Friday, they were planning until it's dark. It was dark when I left, and then yesterday I, it was too wet for me to stand in front of the church and look at the planet. So, uh, but thank you to those who did that. Um, Blessing of the Animals is coming up the first Saturday in October, which I believe is the 7th. Yes. Um, that will be rain or shine. Um, that's at 10 a.m., um, confirmation class starts this coming week, Sunday afternoon, October 1st. Um, the crop walk is Sunday, October 15th, and there's information in a table in Fellowship Hall about that. Um, and, and thanks to everybody who donated for the clothing drive. So, uh, and so, yeah. Um, all right. Let's take a moment of quiet. Please rise as you are able. And join me for the confession. We're using the yellow bullet. So. Blessed be God, the one who forms this Jesus, who bears the cross, and the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sins. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have lost, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ. God's justice stretched beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already forgiven. Amen. Amen. Please rise. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Um, please remain standing. We're going to sing our hymn, and it's an insert. We're going to sing the first and last verse of Onward Christian Soldiers. And this is an illustration. The refrain is on the back of the insert. So sing a verse, flip. Sing the fourth <laughs> verse, flip. Okay. Although most of you know what's on the back, so you probably don't need to flip either. All right.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, your servant Jacob wrestled with your angel and prevailed. In honor of his persistence, you give him a new name. Teach us to persist in the face of struggle and call us by name. Amen. Amen. Um, you may be seated while we hear the lesson. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And then he said, and he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, 
but what you want, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Um, you may be seated. While I was away on vacation, um, I was I was thinking about how I have a blessed life, and um, and and you know often that's interpreted you know meaning just the things you have, and that was part of it. You know I have a I have a car that works. I'm kind of afraid to say that. Um, you know I I have a job with vacation. I have a job that pays me on vacation. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm physically capable, I can do things, I, you know, I, I got a great family that puts up with me, I got a great congregation that puts up with me, um, and, and so, you know, I was thinking about that, but also bigger blessings, you know, beyond just like physical things, well, like I said, you know, family and, and workplace and stuff like that, and calling, um, but, but my life has not been without problems, um, my life has not been without struggles, um, well, um, this is not, you know, wildly different than what I expected. Certainly my life has not turned out how I thought it would be. Even, you know, 10 years, right? Who thought 10 years ago we'd have the whole COVID thing and we'd be on, you know. I mean, all kinds of things in my life have not turned out as expected. And some of it hasn't been easy. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's been some serious struggles in my life, which we're not sharing here because this is not therapy or the point of this sermon. Uh, but anyway, you know, but I, but I know other people. I mean, I, I know the people that I, I, um, I'm looking at that I can physically see. I, I know some people who regularly watch this online. You know, we, we've all got struggles. And, and so it's interesting because we, we have Jacob on the scene. Um, we, we were introduced, um, Abraham and Isaac, um, not Abraham and Isaac, Abraham and Sarah, and then Isaac, um, earlier last this month um, and and now uh, we have Jacob who is Isaac's grandson we have just gone through about 30 chapters in Genesis with three lessons so we've really um, jumped forward um, Jacob has a blessing he's a cheat he stole it from his brother um, and he had to flee from Israel he had to go um, I need to look at the map had to go this way um, from Israel um, to flee because his brother wanted to kill him because he had cheated his brother for the blessing. Um, he goes away with nothing. And now God has told him many years later to go back. Um, we're told, David read this, that he has two wives, 11 children, and a lot of livestock. He also has a lot of money. Um, God has told him to go back to see his brother Esau. We also heard this in our lesson. Jacob is scared to death because the last time he saw Esau, Esau wanted to kill him. And so Jacob sends, and we skip these verses, um, Jacob sends a big gift to his brother of all kinds of livestock and things. And then he sends his family ahead of him. And then he spends the night on the other side of the river and he gets into this wrestling match with a divine being. Um, scholars um, spend a lot of time discussing who this divine being is. Um, some of them think it's an angel, and I noticed when we read the prayer of the day for this lesson, whoever wrote that prayer of the day believes it was an angel. Other scholars think it was actually God. I tend to lean towards that camp. However, even in our dialogue, right, we're, you know, Jacob asked for a name, he doesn't get a name, right? You know, the divine being asks Jacob for a name, Jacob gives his name, his name gets changed. Um, and then Jacob asks for a name and doesn't get it. So the story is intentionally vague about who this being is, other than the fact that clearly this is a divine being. However, this divine being cannot beat Jacob. Jacob won't let go. Even when the divine being does a trick punch and smashes his hip out of joint, um, Jacob doesn't let go. And apparently this divine being doesn't like daylight. Um, and so he asks to let go, and Jacob says, no, not without another blessing. Um, and, and he gets it, and his name gets changed. And this becomes the name of, the, of his descendants, of the people. Um, Israel. I, I know I've said this before, but I'm going to give you a basic Hebrew that you discover in America. Um, the general word for God in Hebrew, lowercase gods, like gods, is Elohim. It starts E-L in English. 
And so whenever you see E-L in a word, like Emmanuel, Bethel, the E-L, that's God, all right? The, in Hebrew, the specific name for God is Yahweh. But when you're talking about gods, all right, they're Elohim. So when you see um, E-L in a word, it has to do with God. So his name is changed from Jacob to Israel, and we're told that means strive with God, right? Um, and then Jacob says, wow, when it's done, he goes, I need to change the name of this place. So he calls it Peniel, which means saw the face of God. Um, and, and so he's, he, he struggles with God and, and, and is damaged. He's hurt, um, but he's also blessed. He does, after this, um, cross the river, rejoin his family. Um, but he's a different Jacob. He's a different Jacob than many years before when he had fled. He was a very um, self-centered, um, feeling entitled Jacob who had um, cheated his brother, um, but then fled for his life. And now he comes back and he actually, if we were to read, um, he calls his brother Lord. He offers to be his brother's servant. Um, and he also has a better understanding of God with these struggles. And, and his brother, I, I don't know if I said that sermon, his brother does accept him, um, but, but it's like I said, it's, it's not without struggles that come along. And Jacob had struggles before he got to this point. Um, and I lift that up because, you know, life is not easy. Even, I, I think we're all blessed. I think some of us have a hard time seeing that than others. But, but life is not easy. And there, there are all kinds of struggles that affect us. And if you don't believe me, where were you in the last three years? right with COVID and everything um so so life um does have its struggle it doesn't mean god isn't there in fact the bible is full of stories like this where god is there in the midst of struggles and what jacob does is he doesn't give up in the midst of his failures and his struggles and his fears of being killed by his brother he is following god's command and he doesn't give up and he asks for another blessing. He has an encounter he doesn't expect, but he asks for God's blessing. And he gets it. And he doesn't give up, and he doesn't give up following God's word. And I think that's important now more than ever. That we still, as God's followers, follow God's word. Even if we can't see that God is helping us. Even if we have fears like Jacob did about what happens when I see my brother, you know, um, that we don't lose hope because it's very easy to get caught in the negative. Oh, this looks bad. That looks bad. Yeah, but we're not alone when it looks bad. We have God who created us and made us. God who is still with us in the midst of our struggles and our joys. And I believe that whenever, and God is always holding on to us. God is always there. God comes to Jacob, he said. But in the midst of this, when we can hold back onto the God that is there, we know the benefits of God being there. God's going to carry us no matter what. But when we can see who is with us, when we can embrace that and use that, we have that strength and that knowledge that can continue to help. And that actually our struggles can make us stronger. I, I believe that. I believe that, that all of those difficulties in my life um, can be used. I, I'm not sure I have used them all to the good, but I believe it can be used. You know, to make us stronger and more aware and more alert and better centered on the other. Because we all have struggles. But that doesn't mean that we aren't alone. In fact, God is here because of our struggles. Jesus died because of our struggles. Our gospel um, lesson is portrayed in the pit window in the back of the church. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, the night he is arrested, he is asking God for a plan B. Um, he specifically says, let this cut pass from me, but not my will, but yours. Jesus himself had struggles. And on the cross, he even said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet he wasn't forsaken. He was raised. He did bring salvation. And that salvation is ours now. And it's ours and ours that we can help power us to share it with the world now and always. Amen. Amen.
Um, please rise as you are able. We're going to sing him 399. Let us confess our faith um, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for everybody according to their needs. Lord, you have made us and created us and brought us into this life, and yet this life is not without struggles. Help us to know that you are with us in the midst of our trials and tribulations, and that you are there to help us in all things, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, and Lord, we pray that you would guide us and change us as you changed Jacob to live aware of others and to be as best um, as you desire for ourselves, for you, and for others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, and Lord, we thank you for all those who work in service. We especially pray for those who work in retail. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, and Lord, we pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ especially those who are part of First Lutheran in Montclair. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. And Lord, we pray for our sisters and brothers in this nation, for our leaders and all within its borders, that you continue to lift us up and help us to care for one another. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are sick and in need. We especially pray for Harriet and Eric. Jeannie Barber, Rick Sims, Lily, Uncle Bobby, Pat Hamilton, Carol, Jackie, Dominic, Pauline, um, Gordon, Doris, Eddie, Norma, Ellie, Barbara, Jane, Margaret, and Bob Johnson. And those who remember before you now, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all families and couples. We especially pray that you lift up Danielle and Willie who were married yesterday. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we remember those who have died and rest in you, and we ask that you comfort all who mourn. Lord, in 
in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy now and always. Amen. And you may be seated while we bring forth the offering.
rise as you are able. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us together the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.